world. You are rocking the free world. You are rocking the free world. This is today's front page of uh, probably the most read newspaper in BC. Street fighting. The large number of motorhomes and other recreational vehicles descending on this West Point Grey neighborhood has residents worried about sanitation and safety. Boy, where have we seen this before? Perhaps south of the border in the USA? RV squatters descend on Jericho Beach. Well, yeah. I thought I'd come down to that exact location right now to do a little video about this. Okay, at first glance, this is uh, what I always preach about on this channel, right? A few bad apples ruin it for everyone else. And it's never the city or the police that you should be worried about wherever you live in your van. It's the people, the citizens, the people that own homes nearby or businesses nearby. Those are the people you got to worry about because they're the ones that call the city and that call the police. And that's when you get enforcement action, okay? I don't know how many times I've said this on my channel. Most of you have common sense and you know this, but there's a few who still squat. They just leave their vehicle in the same place for a week or two weeks or sometimes longer in some areas and you're causing all the problems. All right. So when I first saw this headline today, I thought, oh crap, <sighs> that's what it is, right? And it is to some extent. There's a couple of really large rigs that uh, don't really move around. They stay in the same spot. And this is a very, uh, a very uh, popular area with multi-million dollar mansions all around. So then I actually sat down and read the article. Well, it's a little misleading when it says residents worried about sanitation and safety when it when it's pluralized like that. It's making it sound like the whole neighborhood's up in arms. When in reality, all of this bad media is mostly because of one guy, one guy, Mr. Mark Rogers, Mark Rogers, your name is in the public domain now because it's published in the newspaper. So I have every right to say it on the, on my YouTube channel. Mark Rogers is so fed up with the illegal squatters around Vancouver's Jericho beach that he's posted over 300 photos of their vehicles to social media over the past three months. Rogers says the vehicles from trucks with plywood camper conversions to 60 foot air conditioned RVs camp overnight with impunity on Vancouver city streets and in park board lots. One night last week, he counted 34 vehicles within three blocks of his house in the West Point Grey neighborhood and one third to one half of them have US license plates. He started accounts on Instagram and Twitter. Check out the Instagram at illegal RV parking Vancouver. Now, <laughs> Mark, right off the bat, all right, I went through your Instagram account, looking at the photos of these vans and RVs. I know a lot of these people, by the way, that you're taking pictures of, and some of your captions there, you're saying that these are not nice people that live in their RVs. Well, I know most of them. I can tell you we're a hell of a lot nicer than some of the homeowners around here. Perhaps one guy that lives within three blocks of the beach here. I won't name any names though. but. Anyone is going to be confrontational if you come up to them and you harass them. And naming your Instagram account illegal <laughs> RV parking Vancouver, like <laughs> illegal. You're, you're saying that just parking at the beach is illegal. Look, I understand if someone's parked in a place where they're not supposed to be parked overnight, like the parking lots down the beach that say no parking 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That goes for all vehicles. That means you with your Lexus can't park there after 10 o'clock. Neither can RVs. It's not just about RVs. It's for everyone. You're discriminating just against the RVs. And it's not about how big and small the vehicle is. You also made a statement saying it's not fair to the day users who come down to the beach because we're parked here. I'm like, huh? So wait a sec. In order to uh, enjoy a public beach and public parking, your vehicle must not have a bed inside it. <laughs> That's what you're saying, basically. You have labeled everybody's vehicle that is camperized, no matter how big or small, you are even putting pictures of little minivans on your account. You put pictures of SUVs that people put beds in the back on your account, mostly travelers just stopping through the city, and you're calling them illegal. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. There's nothing illegal about parking my van down here at the beach and enjoying the beach as a resident of this city, whether you like it or not. If I park in a parking lot after 10 o'clock, sure, I'm breaking a parks board bylaw and I can get a ticket for that. 
but so can you, even if your vehicle doesn't have a bed in it. So your account is confrontational and inaccurate right off the bat by calling it illegal RV parking. I went through all your pictures. I was actually getting offended for a while because I couldn't find any pictures of my van. Finally, I did. I went farther down and, and I found a nice picture of my purple beast here. Thank you very much. By the way, I have you on camera taking a picture of my van because I have security cameras all around my van. I guess you didn't notice that. <laughs> on a recent afternoon near, near Locarno Beach, he points out one camper van with a running gas power generator that often has its sewage pipe uncapped with a bucket under it to catch waste. Okay. That's not acceptable. I agree with you. What you're doing is pointing out the exceptions to the rule. I could take you to any number of thousands of houses and apartments in this city which are absolutely filthy. But it's sight unseen so you don't care about that. You're just worried about the one guy with a dirty camper parked on the side of the road. Look, I get it. It looks like crap. And I'm with you. People shouldn't squat. People certainly shouldn't dump anything on the street. By the way, I know the camper you're talking about. He's not dumping any sewage on the street. And about half the RVs on the road have a missing cap on that, on that sewage pipe. It's just a little plastic cap. It doesn't actually stop the sewage from coming out, okay? So he's not dumping sewage on the street. He's just catching his gray water, shower water, or sink water. But that's besides the point, okay? You're talking about 30 people down here in their vans, and then you go and find the one that's doing something wrong to try to make us all look bad. You're labeling, and you're judging everyone because of that, when most of us are just average folks, just like myself, who spend a lot of money on our homes on wheels, and who work a nine to five job just to get by in this city. And you're, and you're judging the whole group of them because of one person? Well, geez, there's a hell of a lot of filthy scum landlords out there and disgusting rundown houses and apartments and grow ops and just horrible living conditions all over the city. But you're worried about the guy with his camper. Seriously, get your priorities straight. And you're also claiming that it's a problem. First of all, I disagree, it's not a problem. And that it's a problem that's getting worse. In your perception, that means there's more campers. I think you're just noticing them now. You are taking pictures of people's converted minivans, SUVs, any traveling vehicle of any type, especially with foreign license plates. What do you have against Americans? Vancouver is a city that, that relies on tourism. We have thousands of people that come to Vancouver every summer in all sorts of RVs from little truck canopies to giant air conditioned uh, Winnebago's and everything in between. It's always been that way. It's not getting worse. In fact, I'd say there was even more people down here doing this 15 years ago. Maybe you're new to the neighborhood. I don't know. Perhaps one day you'll want to buy an RV and drive to another West Coast city and stay there overnight. How would you like to be uh, treated like a criminal just for parking there and going to sleep? And by the way, most of your photos are of RVs during the daytime perfectly legally parked and enjoying the beach, which is everyone's right, whether they live in a house or whether they live on a boat or whether they live in a van. Everyone has the same equal right to this public space. That doesn't mean we have a right to squat here and just permanently live here. Again, like I said, I agree with you. But the vast majority of people move around. A lot of us have jobs. We're gone for a while, we come back a few days later, and then you come running out of your house with your camera, click, the sky is falling. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Do you not have a hobby? I would like to officially invite you to CamperCon 2018, which is coming up the end of the summer, which happens right down here on this beach. We have a great meetup with people from all over North America. A lot of US license plates, you know, all your buddies, they're gonna be here just to celebrate our lifestyle and promote our lifestyle for both travelers and for urban living. Especially in a city with such high housing costs as Vancouver, no mortgage, no yard work, no stress. That's the motto of a local man who's been living in a camper van for 16 years. Today he organized an event in Vancouver for other like-minded urban campers. This is Camper Con. Today at Spanish Banks, organized by a man who goes by the name of Justin Credible to a large following online. Today's event brought together van dwellers from across North America who share a nomadic rent-free lifestyle. I think it's really good to get it out there too that we're not a bunch of homeless bums. We actually have a home. This is our home. And a lot of us are working class. We work a regular job just like you and everyone else. It's a great, affordable, alternative way to live and it affords you the freedom that you don't have and you're miserable about because you're stuck in your big mansion a few blocks away and you're pissed off that we all have the freedom to park down here at the beach 
You know, what difference does it make if it's a million dollar property across the street or it's a $2,000 property across the street? This is public. The beach is for everyone, not just you and people who drive Bentleys around. It's for everyone. I have been nothing but respectful to neighbors, residents, and to the city. And I understand it's good to move around. I keep my vehicle clean and tidy. I don't squat in the same place. But I have every right to park down here every single day if I want, which I do. And I might leave tonight or I might just drive a couple blocks away and go to sleep for the night and come back during the day tomorrow. And there's nothing illegal about that. So I want you to come down to CamperCon this year. I will give you a nice van life t-shirt like this if you show up and introduce yourself. Uh, maybe I'll give you one of my keep on rocking in the free world stickers, although that probably offends you because the words free world are in there and it's obviously something that uh, you don't like. Um, maybe you'd like somewhere like North Korea. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you don't like Canada and you don't like the fact people have freedom. A city official said that the city received three complaints about oversized vehicles this year and two of the vehicles were gone by the time the bylaw officer arrived. Three complaints over a year, but you say there's 30 RVs here every night. Sometimes there are. Only three complaints in an entire year about oversized vehicles. And, and you're calling this some big crisis, some big problem. It seems to me that uh, most people who live in this neighborhood are well accustomed to the fact that it's a public beach with kilometers of parking lots and RVs park here, especially in the summer. Especially when a lot of um, US tourists show, show up in town. They like to come down and hang out at the beach just like I do and I live here. So this is nothing new. People have been doing this in Vancouver since the 50s and in the summer months you're bound to see a lot more of them because it's RV season. <laughs> what, you're, what you're trying to say is that uh, every vehicle that just because a vehicle parks at the beach that has a bed in it doesn't make it illegal. You know, that's like me saying that your vehicle is illegal because it's silver, right? You know what? You, I should start an Instagram account and call it Illegal House of Point Grey, Vancouver and just take pictures of your house and put it up every day because that makes just as much sense as taking a picture of my van parked down here in the daytime and calling it illegal. <laughs> You realize how silly you sound? I see a lot of other people have already started schooling you on your Twitter and Instagram account. You are a NIMBY, a not in my backyard type. You think everyone should live in cookie cutter houses and everybody should drive the same silver cookie cutter sedan and the beach uh, should be, you know, your private uh, waterfront property because you happen to, you chose to mortgage a house nearby to live close to the beach when you damn well knew that it was public, public area. Anyone can come down here. That's like people that move next to an airport and then complain about uh, all the planes. Uh, I know there are people who do that too. Maybe you're related to some of them. So, Mark, come on down to CamperCon. I'd love to meet you. And you can meet a whole bunch of us in our RVs from not just Vancouver, but from all over North America, including many US states. And you will see that they are awesome people, very down to earth. And I'm gonna just wager that they're all a lot happier than you are. I'm just incredible, that's my opinion, and I proudly live in my van because it's awesome. They don't call it Vancouver for nothing, buddy. Keep on rocking in the free world. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down so we know exactly how many losers are still living in their mom's basement and jealous of the rest of us on YouTube. And if you want to check me out on my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, maybe buy some rad t-shirts like this, or maybe you want to show me your rig or ask me some questions, just head on over to justincredible.tv. Why don't you uh, get a job, you homeless uh, bum? Get a job? Yeah. What? Excuse me? What's the matter with you, you white picket fence loving idiot? Why don't you go give your landlord some money and pay for the privilege of living in his house? Now who's homeless now, huh? <laughs> Just Incredible TV is not gluten-free.